Well, we're going to talk about this really important and popular subject in our culture today on sin. Our society says it's archaic, it's out of date, we shouldn't bring it up, but it's mankind's biggest problem. It's humankind's biggest issue is sin because it affects all of us from the king to the greatest president in the world to the person with the greatest authority to the beggar on the street corner. We're all impacted by sin. And when sin enters the picture in Genesis chapter 3, sin breaks relationship with ourselves. I can't even trust myself now, right? It breaks relationship with other people. It ruined the first and only perfect marriage on planet Earth. Sin ruined that. How do we know that? Because they were the only two people on the planet and they were naked. Now, biblically speaking, the only person we should be naked in front of is our spouse. And they felt ashamed within marriage by being naked. That's what sin does. Sin distorts things. Sin turns things from good, things that God intended for good, and and brings about shame and guilt. It breaks relationship with with our Creator. Breaks relationship with God. It also breaks relationship with our environment. And now we must labor and work and sweat and have blisters and have pain because of sin. So let's talk about sin today. The most important sin to confess, the best time to confess sin is before you sin. And so we're going to talk about that. Do you have somebody you can pick up a phone, you can call before you sin? An accountability partner, do you have a friend? Can you be fully transparent and authentic with another person in your life? As followers of Jesus, we're called to be authentic followers of Jesus. What does that mean? What does authenticity mean? It means trusting God with the real me. God already knows you. He knows the real you. You don't need to pretend when you come to God. He knows you. So be honest. Confess. Tell him what's going on. He already knows it, but he cares about relationship with you. He wants a conversation with you. He wants to talk this out. And then have another person in your life. It's not every person. We're not told to share everything with everyone. But if you're married, it should begin with your spouse. To be fully transparent. No secrets within the confines of marriage. But men, you should have another guy in your life. Women, you should have another woman in your life. And so go to environments where you can swap phone numbers. Show up at the women's connections and the women's gatherings and the women's events. So at the end of it, you can swap a phone number. Is it okay if I call you? I'm going through something hard. I'm going through something difficult. Men, have another phone number. You can reach out. You can ask each other the question, are you doing anything stupid or are you thinking of doing anything stupid? Confess. Why? Because James talks about confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. Sin, to battle sin, requires healthy community. God never says, all you need is me. I'll talk to some people. I'll sit down and talk to people and say, oh, I'm, I'm fighting this addiction on my own. Listen, that will fail. You cannot fight addiction on your own. You cannot battle sin by yourself. You need a relationship by the power of Jesus and through his grace. But you also need another person in your life. You need healthy community. None of us are ever told to do life alone. In fact, in the same chapter where sin enters the world, God says it's not good for man to be alone. It is not good for man to be alone. And so God shows up right after they sin. He he asks, he calls out to them, where are you? What are you doing? Where are you? Now listen, God never asks the serpent a question because God does not compromise with evil. God does not compromise. He doesn't call out to the serpent. He calls out to Adam and Eve. Why? Because he longs to be in relationship with Adam and Eve. And so the saying is true. We've heard it before. It is so very true. God loves the sinner. Jesus is called a friend of the sinners. He loves you and I in our sin. He calls out to us. He asks us where we are. He asks us, what are you doing? But he does not compromise sin. He does not compromise with with evil. And so he hates sin, but he loves the sinner. And so today's devotional, as we look at the beginning of how sin wrecked this world and wrecked you and I, I want to ask you, is there a sin that you need to confess? Is there an addiction you've been trying to fight on your own? 
have another person, begin a relationship with another person that you trust, someone you know, someone who know, you know is going to speak truth to you, who's going to love you, not judge you, but love you, listen to you, a safe environment, but then also speak truth to you, all right? Someone who loves you, but also someone that can speak truth to you. If you don't have that person in your life, find it at Boulder Mountain. Find another person, a woman or a man, find them and have an accountability partner. Let me pray. Father, I pray for those of us currently battling sin and trying to do it on our own. Listen, there's only two types of people in the world, those in denial and those in recovery. And I pray that we would be in recovery, all of us. That we would all be open. We would all admit our sin, our faults to you, God, and to another person. Give us boldness. Give us courage. Give us the wisdom to know what to do and then the courage to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This week, we're still in Genesis 3 as we look at the first prophecy given in the Bible, Genesis chapter 3. I'll see you then.